welcome to the MDS podcast, the podcast channel of the International Parkinson and Movement Disorders Society. I'm Tiago Tairo, a professor at the University Medical Center Göttingen in Germany, and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Professor Britt Mollenauer, chair of the Movement Disorders Hospital in Kassel, Germany, the hospital that was formerly led by Professor Claudia Trenkwalder, and Britt is also a professor at G, the same hospital where I work in Germany. So, hi Britt, it's a pleasure to have you in the podcast. Hi, Thiago. Thanks for the invitation. So we are at the MDS Congress, and uh, what are you your thoughts about the Congress so far? I really like it. It's very inspiring. It's very diverse in people attending, and I like the program very much so far. It has been a lot on basic science and really, really interesting lectures, I heard. Yeah, no, that's good that you feel that, that basic science, which we both uh, like right. so much, is being represented. So you gave a lecture yesterday. Can you give us uh, an overview of the topics covered in, in the session and then in particular what you covered in your talk as well? Right. So that was a parallel session on prodromal Parkinson's disease. And there were several topics covered. So it was very much on biomarkers, but then also on how to deal with knowing the risk to develop Parkinson's disease and what you can do to prevent or delay the onset of Parkinson's disease if you know your risk. So the first topic was was covering biomarkers in terms of imaging. So that was really interesting. There are a lot of studies uh, in the past and that was reviewed. It was a really great talk. And then I did the fluid biomarker part. I mainly covered proteomic. There was one question why I didn't talk about metabolomic or lipidomic. And I said, yes, absolutely true. So I mainly cover everything in, in 30 minutes. So, of course, I talked about the CSF SAA results also in prodromal predicting many years before the onset of Parkinson's disease. And then also the, the proteomic study that, that we are doing and, and others looking into extracellular vesicles, for example. And I was also asked to cover a little bit on microbiome, although I think this is not a true biomarker topic. So we kind of touched the microbiome a little bit as an aspect to also increase the risk to develop neurodegeneration through gut-brain barrier leakage. And that was covered in a very good plenary this morning on environmental risk and neurodegeneration. Yeah, I was there and I was really... It was very uh, good, right? You know, yeah. very interested in the topics covered in that session. It's a very important topic. And uh, so how, how do you think we need to behave uh, in terms of all these environmental risks and climate change and all these things that were discussed? Can we do something to reduce the risk? I think as as an individual, you can do it, definitely. I mean, you can also, as an individual, do something against the climate change. I mean, I think everybody should do this. But as an individual, you can lower your risk. I mean, this was laid out also yesterday in the prodromal session really nicely with exercise and nutrition and sleep improvement. I think that's major. I, I was intrigued by this information today about the virus load all the viral risk factors to develop PD and the difference in log 2 mutation carriers. I thought it was interesting. I didn't know this, but I think this is interesting and important. And also, I mean, of course, it was a bit touched on microplastic as well at the very end, although I think we already had Parkinson's disease 200 years ago, and there was definitely before plastics and pesticides and things like that. But I like the comment by Bas Blum saying that maybe the society should definitely make the point and make the industry more responsible also in terms of their compounds raising the risk to develop neurodegenerative disease. I think it was a good remark, and I think that's a good idea. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think the society has the power and can gather the voices of all of us and just make recommendations to the the authorities that make the decisions. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is this is. But with alpha synuclein, I don't know if you know, but there are some studies that sh showed some findings uh, connecting alpha synuclein with some antiviral properties. I don't know if yes, you. Yes, I know it's this. It's not so recent stuff, but right. And I don't since know if this relates to, to yeah. So since you know this, we are studying the nose as a port of entry of potential also viruses or other risk factors getting from the nose and then progressing towards the brain or neurodegeneration. I think it's true that, and there are also studies out, this is also not very recent, but so if you have a gut or maybe also a nasal infection, 
then obviously Sinuclin comes into the game and maybe is a good player against the infection. So maybe this is an expression of resistance to viruses. And yeah, it has some antiviral properties, definitely. Yeah, I think definitely there is a lot still to learn about the function of alpha synuclein. We tend to think about it just being related to the presynapse and its connection with the trafficking of synaptic vesicles, but it's probably doing more things that we still don't know, right? And maybe it's actually better than we think. Yeah, it's not just there to create problems, but uh, it's there with a, a, a positive function as well. Yeah, so I, I think this is intriguing and we should definitely dig more into that field. Mm -hmm. And now in terms of basic science at the Congress, have you seen a lot? I mean, we've seen some, but what's your feeling as the chair of the basic science interest group of MDS? What can we do to bring more basic scientists to the Congress and to increase basic science? Yeah, as the chair, I would say there is never enough basic science. And we had the networking reception yesterday evening with a lot of young attendants and they of course are still a bit complaining about the amount of clinical presentations that are here uh, also in terms of the posters but I think I mean you in the past have done a tremendous job to change this and I see it changing but it's changing slowly but I think we need more representation of basic scientists also in the program committees to really see more basic science lectures, which we have shown some, or we have seen some here at the conference already, Virginia Lee yesterday, for example, or Cordova in the neurobiology session yesterday morning. I think these are all good steps, but it can be more, especially what I really like about the MDS conference is really this diversity. I mean, and you are also attending all these basic scientific conferences, and where is it so diverse? Where do you really see all countries on the table. And I think that's a big chance that the MDS should really take also in terms of basic science, not only in terms of standardizing of clinical care. I know this is a very um, important aspect of, of the society, but also in terms of basic science, I think there can be much more with these many diverse people around here. No, I agree. I, I think the society is uniquely positioned to really connect the two worlds, if we want to think about it like that. I mean, it's not that they are separate, but they could be more connected and, and other meetings do not serve this purpose. So I think MDS can serve the purpose of connecting basic scientists doing, you know, very fundamental research with clinicians working with the patients and trying to understand what the diseases are all about. And I mean, you are also a great example of someone that connects the two worlds. So this is something that I personally think that uh, MDS can do even more. I mean, it's trying and it's doing some, but maybe we can work together and push it so that it, there's more. Yeah, I think we need to do this. I mean, also phenotyping PD is on the one hand clinically, but then finding out that SIA synuclein is negative, this needs to be solved. And we need to really interact much more between scientists and clinicians. And, and that's actually the forum here. We need to do that and maybe also improve that in the future congresses. And uh, yeah, so any other thoughts you would like to share about the Congress, about MDS with, your, with our listeners? I, I always enjoy coming to the MDS. I, I enjoy this conference definitely with this wonderful program. I see all the hard work behind the scenes. I'm always a bit too busy with too many meetings, so business meetings that hamper maybe the conversation between scientists and clinicians. But you can also not extend that to two weeks. I know this. So it needs to be balanced. And But now I really enjoy it and, and congratulate everybody who has been majorly organizing this conference. It has been really great so far. Great. So thank you so much, Brit. It was a pleasure having you on the podcast. Thank and you, And we look forward for future opportunities to talk to you. Of course. Thanks a lot. So we have interviewed Professor Brit Mollenauer and discussed her participation at the MDS Congress 2024. Thank you all for listening and join us for our upcoming podcasts. The views and opinions expressed by the participants in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of the International Parkinson and Movement Disorder Society or their affiliated journals, Movement Disorders and Movement Disorders Clinical Practice. Any disclosures of the participants can be found within the episode description located on the MDS website.